Are you a hero? If you didn't already go out and buy some plot armor, you probably aren't. But that won't stop people from saying how to beat this threat and yelling, I am a hero! Now, what if an infection from beyond the stars came down planet side and started turning people left and right into not only the undead, but into talking, mutated monsters capable of destruction and carnage unlike most zombie apocalypses? We'll primarily discuss the zombies and events portrayed in the 2016 live action film version of this series, and using just a little bit of the elements from the manga that will be brought up to fill in narrative spots and season the meat that is this particular survival scenario. Today, we are discussing why you wouldn't survive. I am a hero's ZQN zombie apocalypse. Humanity enjoys its time in the cosmos on its singular rock developing itself, but certain extraterrestrial entities have spectated us for countless ages, biding their time, allowing us to build up cities, create useful tools, making conveniences and technology that revolutionize upon themselves each and every day. Those amongst the stars see what we have made and want it all for themselves, everything except the species that created it all. In order to do so, they concocted a horrific virus spurring what would be known as ZQN that would be spread across the planet. A film theory! As discussed in my previous video, Why Doesn't Zombie Media Say the Word Zombie, the anagram for ZQN is described by the US military as Zero Qualified Nucleus, but that isn't where the term comes from, originating in Japanese online forums where the dead were called Zakyon, a play on words for the Japanese term Dakyon, meaning delinquent or idiot. DQN sounds similar to Dakyon, so ZQNs are not too far off. Many people derived their know-how and information on the pandemic and zombies from online forums when the outbreak first began. The ZQN virus spreads through normal vectors of bites and bodily fluids if they enter a victim's bloodstream. Time to full infection can have wildly different ranges depending on the person's mental health and determination and anatomy. People that become infected go through a wide variety of symptoms and behaviors. Many different physical attributes can be seen across the body. Veins will rapidly blacken as the blood inside almost becomes tar-like. The eyes are the most notable change in a ZQN. The whites of the eyes become blood red as the pupils themselves are whited out. The eyes will orient themselves in completely opposite directions, looking almost alien in nature. Whether or not to allow the infected to see like a chameleon or even if sight is a factor for them is up to interpretation. Some go through wild convulsions of the body as it struggles to maintain posture, probably from the body struggling to keep up with its own rapid internal mutations, seizing up muscles as they constrict and contract. Those that succumb to the virus quickly will also have parts or sometimes all of their face bloat and expand like a tumor. As the gray matter determines what to do with the contaminated frame, the heart will stop beating completely as the body will strengthen itself while all vital internal functions cease except for the brain. The mere mind of a person will be used long after their personality and humanity are gone, affecting how they behave and even speak as a zombie-like personnel. A person's state of mind leading up to becoming infected and subsequently throughout their infection process will determine their demeanor and speech as they become a ZQN, repeating words and statements that were either predominantly on their mind prior or a major element of their line of work or just something that they were obsessed with while a healthy person. Some examples include a manga artist speaking of schedules, Shanky's in and all. Someone going out into the street saying something simple. Head on. Head on. A woman that liked to shop a lot, banging against a store, or a businessman spouting out work drivel. Now, why are they this way? Well, as the nurse puts it. <laughs> In simple terms, think of it like how a person truly speaks their mind when they get completely wasted. The ZQN will use whatever was last in their thoughts to attempt to have the body communicate outwards. Sometimes it can just come out as mindless drivel, like the taxi driver stating how he has an award for 30 years of safe driving. 
but it can also be used to trick uninfected people in to either lure them close or lower their guard long enough to attack them. Like how the turning government official in the car, after getting his blackened blood on his ledger, asked the taxi driver for a tissue. Knowing the man was unaware of what was going on, the ZQN took the chance for the driver's exposed arm to be bitten into. Or how a wandering worker zombie was simply humming a tune in the middle of a forest waiting for someone to hail his siren song. Some of the words used by the ZQN can also psychologically manipulate people, such as when an unhappy infected girlfriend spoke her mind to her healthy boyfriend that she was attacking. <laughs> to cause even more confusion in an initial skirmish. But more often than that, the disheveled appearance and erratic speech of an infected will have most people avoiding them anyways. But during the initial outbreak, many would probably fall for these ominous ploys, especially involving loved ones, friends, or even strangers trying to help out others. While this method of communication has a wide variety of uses for the ZQN, it is mostly un intentional. They are not intentionally doing these kind of things to get people to bite. They are purely just speaking words they really don't understand. It's only in rare cases when they see something that they know related to them in a previous life that they'll say anything different. At heart, most ZQNs are barely even able to think in any capacity or retain any motor skills. Being easily distracted by and flocking to loud noises and not being able to climb fences or buildings or operate tools. So for the most part, many of these zombies will be the run-of-the-mill undead threat, gathering in large numbers in order to swarm and overwhelm the living. Pretty generic for zombies to do. But now, with the effect to trick or distract survivors with their inane ramblings or mimicking body language from their former life. Beyond their minds and their words, the ZQN have other capacities that set them apart from your typical undead. Their strength and durability will be heightened from the virus. The ZQN will be so resistant to damage that they can easily survive and shrug off hellacious damage. Some having half their head caved in and even blown off with no real effect. The front half of a skull can be completely crushed or shot off and a zombie can just shrug it off and continue to live on so long as their brain stem remains intact. These ZQN can only be put down when the brain stem, not the brain but the brain stem, is destroyed or when the body is completely burned. Further mutations will occur in many ZQN infected to meet their own needs, manipulating flesh, bone, and muscle in a moment's notice. Most ZQNs have the ability to unhinge their jaws and stretch them out to take huge bites out of people or to sink their bloody teeth around larger objects. Depending on the physical attributes of a person before infection, can the mind hyperfixate on mutating that person's body further, such as the lead zombie of the film being a former college athlete, running at high speeds and jumping extremely high in tests of its own feats as it constantly plummeted to the ground head first, testing how far it could go with its own physical limits constantly changing, eventually jumping high enough that it was able to leap a few stories high to get to the rooftop safe haven and begin attacking and eating the many survivors there. Possibly from its accentuated focus on physical prowess, was the athletic zombie able to ramp up its strength factor more so than others, enough to where its simple grasp was able to crush the skull of a woman in just one fell swoop. These ZQNs can even learn quickly in an environment, ascertaining to avoid gunfire at high speeds after being shot by a shotgun. Other versions of special ZQNs would seemingly turn into random but still equally terrifying results. 
like people sprawling around the ground on all fours extremely fast, as if they were some sort of spider. Maybe so that it can fit into tighter crawl spaces to get to survivors. Zombies can adapt to the preconceived behaviors and lifestyles of their healthy person in order to get to other healthy people, adapting their strengths as the virus spreads, leaving the dregs of the constantly growing ZQN numbers to meaninglessly speak gibberish. When these special variants find their way to colonies of survivors, they can easily see to upping the infected numbers and possibly creating more special ZQNs. Some people can resist the ZQN virus as it slowly takes hold of the body and mind. Either still being fully aware at the cusp of turning, electing to off themselves before so, or their willpower being strong enough that their mind integrates with the ZQN virus. Whether this is possibly just an immunity to the virus or the capability to be a carrier of the virus, will these select individuals be able to reap only the benefits of the ZQN's mutations with just a few downsides, signified with the notable trait of only one eye becoming ZQN-like. Hiromi, a small-framed high school girl, was one of these cases. Upon adapting with the ZQN, was she able to easily snap the head of a zombie backwards with ease, paralyzing the infected worker and then proceeding to rip off its head and arm like it were simply a plastic doll. Throwing survivors that posed a threat to her like they were a sack of potatoes, she was durable as hell. As long as the brainstem is not severed or injured, a ZQN hybrid can easily rest off all sorts of damage, as she was shot in the head with an arrow and simply just slept it off. For a while during the beginning of the infection, someone that has hybridized with the virus will be unable to speak or even express any emotion, just standing lifelessly as if staring into the void, the polar opposite of a fully infected person. Their only words being much like the full ZQNs, only being able to say a few things from their previous life exclusively. But they are still widely aware of their environment and willing to do what they want and can when the time comes. There is much to the ZQN not explored in the movie, as I'm sure there is plenty more within the manga. But with everything discussed, let's go over the implications of the ZQN and their ramifications for your survival chances. The initial outbreak will be the ultimate test if you survive or not, and where the largest majority of people will die, become infected, or get to safety. ZQNs randomly spouting off words can be very disorienting for many people. <laughs> Typically, in my Why You Wouldn't Survive scenarios, I discuss how many people would succumb to zombies of their loved ones, being unable to subdue them once they see their face and be like, Oh, Johnny, no, not you, and either being bitten or eaten alive by them. But now, imagine that, with a zombie desperately saying things that could destroy you mentally or lower your guard long enough, just to get bitten. We can all pretend as we sit in front of our computers or phones or smart TVs that we would be strong-willed until we are face-to-face -face with an insurmountably difficult situation like that. There would be many of these cases as the ZQN pandemic began. The infection rate for most people would be less than a few minutes, causing further talkative, powerful undead to leap at and taint more normal people. The durability of these zombies being hardier than most would also lend to them being able to spread like wildfire in just about any part of the globe, surviving even having most of their heads shot off to continue their assault and spread the infection. Unlike the main character in the movie, you will not be soloing a horde of zombies with one skeet shotgun. This is not Left for Dead. The ZQN uprising will be all-consuming, and unless you can get somewhere high up or to a safe haven with fortified walls, and or defenses in time, you probably won't be making it, even if you can handle the talking dead. But here is where things get even more unsurvivable compared to the generic Z-Day. 
The thing about the ZQN virus is that it sorts out a predominant trait or thought process within a person's brain and then accentuates upon it. Most of the ZQN shown are just on autopilot as they are just working or showing their lives because they were so obsessed with working or having the definition of a mindless zombie doing mindless stuff, kind of like that woman in the mall just kind of slamming against the store. But we have to remember people do have goals and ambitions, specifically in physical prowess and more. We can assume all day that a lot of people would just be basic bitch zombies, everyone's so generic. But say something like the ZQNs get to people that are at a college, a stadium, a gym, anywhere where people are physically active a lot. Now, imagine a horde of these special ZQNs that are extremely durable and adapt to their physicality. The special ZQN in the film was obviously in track in his college, so he learned to jump high and move at fast speeds with its mutagenic capabilities. Now, imagine gym rats that bench hundreds of pounds and how Hulk-like their physique could get. If a track runner can get strong enough to crush a woman's skull, a gym rat could probably crush a car like a soda can or break through barriers of established safe havens. Those with high intellects could even possibly problem solve and call hordes to their aid to get to survivors since the zombies are attracted to noise. Humans are capable of a lot. We have got to stop pretending like we don't. And the ZQN would easily have dozens or even hundreds of destructive special variants cropping up in no time flat, with them all carving out their way through the landscape as they develop the focal skill their mind retained upon infection. These special variants withstanding much backfire from armed forces as they all sink their teeth into them. Maybe in a place where guns are more common, do the dead retain the knowledge to use guns, or at least know the danger guns pose to their gray matter and start dodging as time goes on with their fast reflexes. The point of the matter being, they can evolve, and with a wide variety of people around the globe, any type of zombie can appear and grow. It doesn't matter what kind of zombies we know about, with the wide range of people that are around, there is going to be an indefinite definite supply of special variants that we never encounter until maybe it's too late. For a very small fraction of the population, depending on either your DNA slash anatomy or mental state, you could have a small chance to become a ZQN hybrid, having your strength heightened, your awareness sharpened, having a high healing factor and insane durability. But being chronically sleepy at all times, you could also be ignored by ZQNs as they detect the virus within you, and remember your speech would be incredibly limited as you act completely different than before, but that's all worth it because you'd be superhuman, right? Well, even then, would living as a ZQN hybrid pose a challenge to your survival? You would be considered a threat by non-infected individuals and armed states. Purely for your appearance of your infected eye and limited speech, people would rightfully assume you carried the virus and could potentially spread it at any moment, intentionally or not. People would also note the change in your strength, durability, and mentality and assume that you may go power hungry or harm others or become fully infected at some point. You cannot risk it with a virus that we largely know nothing about, especially with governmental, military, and scientific institutions all but crumbled, especially in the long term with someone who is seemingly half infected. The virus could mutate inside a hybrid and maybe even cause a super ZQN that could be immune to all damage or anything. Fear would drive us to exterminate a potential hazard like that quickly. Who knows, but if you're one of those lucky few to survive the infection as a hybrid, you'll most likely have to live in hiding as many people would want you killed and your body burned. Earned. So in conclusion, when the shit hits the fan and the Zakyons are flooding the streets, causing people to be confused over the paranoid and distant state of bloodied people only to get bitten themselves, 
many would fall prey to this guise. The psychological effects on many people would have them just be another zombie in no time, slashing large chunks of the populace to turn to the Z side. If you hadn't gotten to high ground or fortified safe havens, the hordes with the special variations included would quickly see to getting to you and munching down. They'll eventually be strong enough to get through anything. Even if you are heavily armed, the fact that you have to nail the brainstem to kill them will put your mark marksmanship to the ultimate test. And even then, their sheer durability will most likely drain your ammunition supply before you can wither down their numbers. With how infectious it was and its complete origins unknown, like I said earlier, it was alien in nature when it first started or maybe it came from somewhere else, but we don't know exactly where it started or how it started. It is possible it might have been airborne or waterborne for a very brief period of time somewhere, and from there it could mutate further through bite victims that die in open bodies of water, getting into our drinking water. As time progresses, more and more ZQNs will appear donning dominant personality traits that show off their superhuman abilities that they worked hard on. And when that time comes, survival is most likely not to be assured. You can try to be a hybrid, but there's no guarantee that either the ZQNs out there or healthy people will accept you and ultimately try to slaughter you. The world will eventually fall to the ZQNs, with half the population being mindless zombies and the other half being hyperfixated zombies that want to work on one trait of themselves. But ultimately, the human race will die out. That wraps up this look into zombie delinquency Japan style. Is there something I omitted or would you have preferred me covering the manga more? Do you think you could survive? Let me know in the comments. Thanks to Chago for editing today's video together and thank you for watching. Shout out to my Patreon patrons and YouTube channel members for donating to keep the channel going. Join my Patreon to see videos up to a week early and be on this list already scrolling on by. Until next time, I'm Zachas, aka Wow Such Gaming. Never forget to stay happy, stay healthy, be heroic however you can, and stay well.